Kanglim is a boy who was born with the ability to see spirits. When he was a baby, he would play and talk with these spiritly figures, which scared his mom. His mom could also see spirits, but she warned Kanglim, worried that his special gift would make him an outsider and people would make fun of him. Her worry was not because he might get hurt, but because regular people couldn't see spirits. One day something unusual happened. Kanglim's mom, extremely worried, told him to hide in the wardrobe, asking him to act like he couldn't see the spirits. Kanglim was confused as he saw his mom crying while she hid him. Just as she was about to comfort him with a gentle touch on his head, something unseen took her away. The wardrobe doors shut, blocking Kanglim's last look at his mom, who was eaten away by the bad spirits. Kanglim had never met his dad and had only his grandfather to depend on. His grandfather, who was very old, had difficulty taking care of them both. So, while still in school, Kanglim had to use his spirit-seeing ability to earn money. He promised himself that he would be strong enough to protect his life and his grandpa, the only person he has in his life. Even though he was good at it, he didn't have any friends other than the spirits he talked with. He preferred to be alone at school, thinking that the other kid's interest in pop stars was childish. However, one day, another student came up to Kanglim carrying a plastic bag and asking for his help. This student told a strange story about a mystery cell phone found near a building site, which gave his friend a shock and then ended up with another student. When they tried to use the phone, a spirit popped out. The third person who touched the phone acted like a zombie. And now this student, the fourth one, needed Kanglim's help because he was worried about his friends. He gave Kanglim the plastic bag that had the scary phone. Realizing how serious this was, Kanglim told the student that his help would cost a lot of money. When he got home, he first ignored the problem, getting lost in playing games. But the number of spirit bugs in his room started to increase. Kanglim found it hard to ignore them, like his mom had advised. After eating dinner with his grandfather, he decided to face the cursed cell phone. At first look, the phone seemed harmless, so Kanglim poked it with his pen, but nothing happened. But when he touched it with his hand, the phone suddenly turned on, and his hand was surrounded by fire. However, the fire disappeared without leaving any burns, and Kanglim felt there was a spirit trapped in the phone. Surprised, the spirit inside woke up, confused about its new body. The spirit looked a lot like an older version of Kanglim. He even had the same name. To make it easier, we'll call him John. John is a spirit messenger, a kind of grim reaper from the underworld, and that he used the soul phone, which was the very phone Kanglim was messing with. Oddly, the phone's apps didn't work, except for the camera. When a spirit moved in front of the camera lens, Kanglim could see its spiritly shape on the screen. This made him curious, so he took a picture of the spirit. Amazingly, the spirit disappeared from sight. Excited by this new power, Kanglim looked at the remaining scared spirits with a proud smile. Wanting to test more, he pushed a few buttons on the phone, making the captured spirit bug appear again and again. Suddenly, a message showed up on the screen, let me out. Kanglim wondered if it was from the spirit bug he had caught. Then, another message appeared saying, I'm trapped. Photo. Intrigued, Kanglim looked at the photos saved on the phone, thinking they might have the caught spirit bug. To his surprise, he found many pictures showing strange spirits. Among them were photos of the friends of the student who had asked for his help, which made Kanglim realize that their disappearance was related to these photos. Another photo showed a person he didn't know who turned out to be John, still stuck in the phone. John begged to be freed, but Kanglim took his time to think about it. Even though his grandfather was calling him for dinner, Kanglim ignored it, too interested in the phone. Finally, he decided to free John. Seeing the phone in Kanglim's hands, John tried to attack him to get it back. Quickly, Kanglim trapped John again by taking his picture. Feeling sorry, John promised not to attack again. But Kanglim wanted to make sure he was safe before he let John out. Talking with John, Kanglim learned why he had gotten stuck in the phone. John's job was to catch bad spirits, and he told a recent story about mean puppies that he managed to trap, but he failed to catch their mom. Kanglim, not really interested, decided to turn off the phone and ignore John's warnings. Instead, he called the spirit puppies and started to play with them, not caring about any danger they might bring. Still, one of the puppies focused on the spirit bugs, sitting and staring at them in a scary way. The next day, Kanglim went to the building site where the phone was found, hoping to learn more about John. He pulled out the phone and pointed its camera at the top of the building, catching sight of the mom of the puppy spirits. As she went up, making a wave of sound, the puppies and other spirits in Kanglim's room reacted. Realizing he made a big mistake by letting the puppies out, Kanglim ran back home, scared they would hurt his grandfather. Luckily, when he got there, his grandfather was safe. But all the other spirits were gone, 
eaten by one mean puppy that had turned into a stronger and more dangerous creature. The puppy attacked Kanglim, who used the phone to catch it. As a result, the bad spirit split into five evil puppies. Hearing their mom's call, the puppies left the house. Kanglim told John everything that happened, and then he let him out. But John scolded Kanglim before leaving with the phone, determined to handle the problem on his own. Driven by curiosity and fear, Kanglim decided to follow John, even though he wanted to avoid danger. When he got there, he saw John making a safety barrier to keep the area separate and fight the beast. After absorbing the puppies, the creature had gotten bigger and stronger. Kanglim saw the huge difference between the dog's power and John's brave but weaker attempts. While watching closely, Kanglim noticed the beast's sneaky tricks, while John changed the phone into a sword. The phone had a bunch of protective features and calling abilities, which impressed Kanglim. Still, John had trouble defending Kanglim from the dog's attacks, while also trying to fight back. Calling up hands with claws, he held the dog back, trying to lock it up. However, the lock didn't work, letting the dog break free and attack again. In the mess, King Gleam saw the phone had dropped near him. Ignoring his instinct to run away, he ran to the device, grabbing it just in time to take a picture of the dog right before it jumped at him. With the dog now trapped, John gave Kanglim a long lecture, demanding the phone back. But Kanglim had a different idea. Aiming the phone's camera at John, he caught him once more. Going back home, Kanglim pretended to forget about the recent events, trying to forget everything that happened. Two weeks later, he was chased by another bad spirit, looking for safety in an empty park. He led the spirit into an empty building, letting John out of the phone to face the danger, telling him what to do. The spirit, showing itself as a bunch of weaker beings, quickly fell to their joint efforts, leaving the mom's spirit confused and scared. Once again, John asked Kong Gleam to give back his phone. However, Kong Gleam wanted to keep John around and he tried to catch him. Sadly, the phone's memory was full, giving John the chance to take the phone back. Kong Gleam, desperate to keep the phone, started to panic. Afraid of what John might do now that he had the phone, Kanglim was shaking. Seeing him scared, John did something to satisfy his curiosity. He turned into a big, scary spirit form. He got close to Kanglim, making him even more scared, then changed back to his human form. Then he started to talk about listening to and respecting older people. Kanglim was so scared that he ran away, going home to warn his grandfather and make sure he was safe inside their house. That night, Kanglim couldn't sleep. He was thinking about his mom and went downstairs to check on his grandfather. The idea that John might be a kind of spirit who could take his grandfather's soul scared him a lot. Wanting to stop that from happening, Kanglim laid next to his grandfather, feeling better being close to him. The next day at school, Kanglim was in a bad mood as his classmates did their cleaning duties. Tired from staying awake all night to protect his grandfather, Kanglim was annoyed when the students asked for his help. A curious student came up to him, showing concern, but Kanglim snapped at him, telling him to go away. To Kanglim's surprise, the student slowly disappeared right before his eyes. This scared the other kids, making the teacher step in and let Kanglim stop working. Not long after, the student who first hired Kanglim showed up, making fun of him for meeting a spiritualist with the same name but better skills. This spiritualist was clearly John, which made Kanglim very angry. He grabbed the posters from the student's hands, crumpled them, and threw them away. When he got home, Kanglim was upset to find his grandfather gone. Overwhelmed with sadness, he cried believing that John was behind the disappearance. Wanting to get back at John, Kanglim used the crumpled poster to find out where John was. He rushed to the building shown on the poster, hoping to save his grandfather from John. But instead, he found John tied up, pinned against the wall by a big, scary spirit. Sarah, who had killed his grandfather, came out of another room. Sarah recognized Kanglim from a picture he had seen in the house and restrained him. Then, Sarah confirmed, Kanglim's grandfather was already dead, his soul at peace, Kanglim started crying. In a moment of desperation, he bit Sarah's arm but was thrown off. Then John changed into a scary form, a giant hand appearing from his back, destroying the spirit holding him. John turned to Sarah, but before he could do anything, Sarah shoot him and restrained him again. He pinned John against the wall and was ready to shoot his brain. But Kanglim got up and grabbed the dagger from the soul phone to stab it into Sarah's back. John got free from his bonds, hitting Sarah hard in the face. Using his giant hand, John tried to crush Sarah, but he escaped through the floor. John, getting his bearings, told Kanglim to run, warning him that Sarah might come back. But Kanglim just stood there in shock, unable to respond. Trying to leave, John was suddenly stopped by Kanglim's crying request, begging him to bring his grandfather back. John ignored the plea, turning to go away. Kanglim, not giving up, held on to him, crying as he shared that his grandfather had died years before. Scared of being alone, Kanglim admitted to using his powers to keep his grandfather's spirit in their house. 
stopping him from leaving. John became really mad, scolding Kanglam for causing his grandfather's spirit to suffer unnecessarily, which could turn him into a mean spirit. Suddenly, a huge golden snake appeared out of nowhere, taking John and leaving Kanglam alone. Looking at the mysterious door in front of him, Kanglam thought about the chance of seeing his grandfather again if he went inside. Scared of being alone in the outside world, he bravely chose to go into the door. His soul left his body, waking up in a weird new place. Comment your favorite part of the video. See you at the next one. Please.